Today, we're exploring a fascinating breakthrough in the field of materials science. Our topic, a remarkable two-dimensional material called monolayer amorphous carbon, often called MAC, which could potentially revolutionize the performance of flexible electronics and many other high-tech applications. We'll talk about what MAC is, how it's structured, and why its toughness has gotten researchers so excited. I'm thrilled to dive into this topic. To begin, let's clarify what we mean by monolayer, amorphous, and crystalline. In material science, a monolayer is a single layer of atoms or molecules, just one atom thick. In this case, we're focusing on carbon, which can exist in many forms. We all know diamond and graphite. Graphite is basically many layers of graphene, with carbon atoms arranged in a precise repeating pattern known as a crystal structure. So that's a crystalline form of carbon. But when carbon is called amorphous, it means the carbon atoms aren't arranged in that neat repeating pattern. Instead, their arrangement is more random. So monolayer amorphous carbon has random bonding configurations, but interestingly, a small fraction of it is still crystalline, forming tiny islands embedded in that amorphous matrix. That's such a critical point. So MAC is basically a two-dimensional nanocomposite, like a hybrid that features an amorphous matrix where small crystalline domains are scattered. A domain here basically refers to a region where the atoms line up in a recognizable repeating pattern of carbon. Researchers recently discovered that thanks to this arrangement, MAC has surprisingly high fracture toughness. By fracture toughness, we mean how resistant a material is to cracking when it's strained or otherwise put under mechanical pressure. Exactly. And as you mentioned, MAC's fracture toughness is quite extraordinary. In fact, some experiments point to up to an eight-fold increase in fracture energy compared to regular monolayer graphene. Let's break down why that's so important. Graphene is famous for being super strong, but it can be quite brittle. Once a crack starts growing in a pristine graphene sheet, it tends to tear cleanly in a straight line, with almost nothing slowing it down. In monolayer amorphous carbon, the presence of these random and crystalline regions changes that crack path. Instead of one unstoppable tear, the crack can get deflected, branched, or even partially bridged by tougher local structures. And that ends up requiring a lot more energy to fully break the sheet. Yes. Let's define a couple of terms that listeners might find interesting and that researchers used to describe what's happening. One is crack blunting. That's when the tip of the crack effectively becomes less sharp, often due to encountering defects or localized structures that don't break immediately. Another mechanism is crack deflection, which means the crack changes direction because it hits a boundary or region that forces it to veer off its original path. And then we have crack bridging, in that situation, you actually see little bridges of material still holding things together. So the crack can't propagate easily as part of it remains connected. Right. It's much like weaving a net that keeps the fracture from running wild. Exactly. And these three mechanisms, blunting, deflection, and bridging, together are a major reason MAC is more damage resistant compared to purely crystalline graphene. The random network of carbon atoms, in other words, the amorphous region, can better absorb energy because it doesn't let the crack keep running as a single line. Meanwhile, the small crystalline islands offer stronger local sections, sometimes pushing the crack path in new directions. Collectively, all these micro-scale interactions add up to a much tougher sheet. This was proven not just by seeing the final broken pieces, but also through what's called in situ tensile testing under an SEM or scanning electron microscope. Scientists basically pull on the material at very small scales while watching in high magnification. This allowed them to catch how the crack advanced step by step in real time. They saw that in monolayer amorphous carbon, it wasn't just a quick tear, it advanced in increments. That's sometimes referred to as stable crack propagation, meaning you can keep pulling and the tear won't catastrophically spread all at once. That's great news if you want to avoid sudden catastrophic failure in applications. And there's another fascinating piece, molecular dynamic simulations, basically advanced computer models that track the movement of individual atoms, confirm what the experiments suggest. In those simulations, you can actually observe the crack tip traveling from a crystalline region to an amorphous region. Inside the amorphous region, 
the defects slow the crack tip, bridging and branching it, which matches up with real physical observations. And they found that by changing the ratio of amorphous to crystalline regions, you can tune how tough the final monolayer is. That begs the question, can we create tunable 2D materials that are custom engineered for specific mechanical needs? It sounds like maybe we can. That's the big picture highlight. If you know how to embed or control these crystalline domains and how large or small they are, you might systematically engineer the ultimate toughness or tailor other properties. That has implications for flexible electronics where you really want tough membranes. These are often used in sensors, batteries, or wearable devices, places where bending, twisting, and potential mechanical stress is a daily challenge. A crack is detrimental, so it's a huge advantage to have stable crack propagation or a much greater resistance to breaking in the first place. For sure. Now, dear listeners, you might ask, how does a material that's mostly random arrangement of carbon atoms plus some crystal sprinkles get grown in the first place? Well, these MAC films can be synthesized via specialized chemical vapor deposition processes that incorporate laser assistance or certain temperature conditions. Interestingly, no matter the method, the thickness stops at about one atom thick, like a self-limiting growth. The resulting film is monolayer. Another point they emphasize is the possibility that the fraction of those tiny crystalline islands can shift depending on growth conditions. This means you can push it more toward purely amorphous or incorporate more crystalline bits, and each variation changes the mechanical outcome. Magical, if you think about it. Very magical indeed. And here's a final reason it's exciting. Typically, 2D materials like graphene, hexagonal boron nitride, or transition metal decalcogenides are known for their impressive electrical or optical properties, but they can also be quite brittle. That's been a big limiting factor in implementing them in real devices that face stress. So bridging that mechanical weakness has always been a top priority. This research on MAC signals one possible solution. If we can adopt an in-plane composite design where a material is partially amorphous and partially crystalline, all in a single atom-thin layer, we might see that brittleness drop drastically while preserving the beneficial electronic or structural properties we want. And that's exactly what's so cool about it. To summarize, we have discovered that monolayer amorphous carbon is a single atom thick 2D material. It's not purely crystalline, not purely random, more like a mosaic of tiny crystalline patches embedded in an amorphous matrix. Because of that patchwork structure, cracks can't just zip through it. The crack tip is deflected or slowed repeatedly. This phenomenon yields a much higher fracture energy eight times more than graphene in some measurements. And we can verify that by seeing new types of crack bridging, deflection, and branching in real-time images, as well as by simulating at the atomic level. All this leads to a major jump in toughness for a 2D honeycomb-like carbon material. Before we completely wrap up, I think it's worth underlining the potential uses. For instance, if you need an ultra-thin protective layer to go over a next-generation flexible circuit, you want something that's robust. In the future, if scientists refine the recipe for MAC and scale it up, we might see it serving as protective membranes or encapsulating layers on new, bendable devices. That means improved reliability for sensors, medical implants, and beyond. The big takeaway is that engineering mechanical resilience is key and MAC shows how it's possible in a single atom thick material by carefully controlling atomic disorder and crystallinity. Absolutely. And with that, I'd say we've painted a pretty vivid picture. A single atom sheet of carbon that merges random and crystalline structures, drastically boosts toughness, and sets the stage for more robust 2D technology. Thank you all for listening to our deep dive on monolayer amorphous carbon, the new shining star in 2D materials science. Stay tuned for more updates from the next wave of discoveries that might just reshape our vision for functional, durable, and flexible devices.